So I was finally able to get a hold of a coin that I've been looking for for quite a while. And I got it at a time when spot price of gold was well within what I'd call a buy range. We're gonna talk about that more in a minute. The only thing left to consider right now So yesterday the US dollar and bond yields fell and that cleared the room for a run for both silver and gold. Now silver made the bigger move. It jumped more than eight and a half percent. That took it back above $20, which is probably where it belongs. Gold, it was more like two and a half percent. But in both cases, this is further proof of how directly metals are affected by dollar strength and treasury yields. I don't think it's all up from here. I don't think the trend is exclusively up. I think the trend is actually volatility, at least until we get that liquidation event that analysts seem so certain will happen. But it is fun to see price action on the metals. It lets us know they're still in the fight. Now, if we want to look at this as a strong move up in price and just enjoy the trend, well, that makes me feel a little bit better about my purchase from last week because I've been looking for something new. I've been on the hunt for a nice, $20 Liberty Head Double Eagle for oh, about six months now. And one thing or another has just always kept me from picking one up. This has happened multiple times. I remember what they used to cost just a few years ago, and that stripped me up a few times, but I still think they're a great option for low-ish premium gold. And on top of that, they pack a historic punch. Now, if you've been shopping for pre-33, you've probably already seen this. You know that it has jumped pretty dramatically in price. Even the Liberty Heads, and they're less popular than the St. Gaudens Double Eagles. They've all kind of shot up. And this isn't an option that's available to everybody, but if you want to find one priced right and you're able to, go to a coin show. The last few that I've been to have had just dozens to choose from. Now, I wasn't able to find exactly what I was looking for. I wanted a raw coin that was still really nice, but I did find a graded MS-63. And as we know by now, all it takes is a hammer. It's a mild disregard for numismatic value. And you can have the coin you want. Raw. So anytime I break a coin out of a slab, I get hate mail in one form or another. And I'm sure this will be no exception, but this was an MS-63. It's not particularly rare. If this was an MS-65, maybe even an MS-64, probably would have triggered whatever sensibility that I have left, or even if I was just more of a collector. But like I said earlier, I want this coin raw. Now at some point, maybe I'll send a bunch of my stuff off to be graded, but for now, it's free. It's more about profiling these coins on the channel to me, and that's just easier outside of the slab. And so I've mentioned the coin shows that I've been to a few times recently, and I spoke to about a dozen coin shop owners between them, and then quite a few collectors on both sides of the booths at the same time. And some of the opinions that I got changed my mind a little bit about pre-33 coins. Now, every show that I've ever been to, it just seems like when you walk in, all you see is a, a sea of slabbed Morgan dollars, just slabs everywhere. And these past two were no exception. There were a lot of slabbed coins, both gold and silver. And one reason for that is that the spot price has been falling. I'll explain that a little bit. Now, a lot of the modern bullion inventory that these sellers had actually cost more than they were able to get out of it for table pricing. So I asked dealers specifically if that was the case, the reason they didn't have as much modern bullion, and a few denied it, but most agreed that, yeah, that, that played into what they were showing. It also played into who had boost. Now, none of my typical local shops were even at the shows. Now, I think that that's a really important bias to note, but most vendors said that they thought pre-33 and then modern American Gold Eagles were the best choices based on popularity and value for you to buy. Now, that isn't what you see on YouTube, but the preference for Eagles has been backed up in every in-person conversation that I've ever had with a shop owner. Pre-33, that has a little bit of a different value proposition, but people mention the obvious historical value and then the fun factor of having a coin that's 120 years old, but a few got into this idea that even when spot price drops, a graded pre-33 coin does not. And that might be maybe a little bit of a stretch, but the idea makes sense. There's collector value beyond the spot price, and that's based on the coin's rarity. 
So I guess that brings me back to why I would ever bust this Liberty head out of a graded slab. I simply don't like slabs. They take gorgeous coins, they lock them away in bad packaging, you can't touch the gold, and to me that's just a different thing. It's unabashed collecting, and I don't do much of that. PCGS alone shows more than 72,000 MS63 $20 Liberty Head Double Eagles in their population, and that is not at all rare. Now, if you jump into an MS65, PCGS only has 6,000. So a 63 gets me to a level where I have a really nice coin, it's what I want, without having to pay a crazy amount for that collector grade. Now, as for hedging spot price through collector value, I'm not sure that I have much of that going on with the Liberty Head, but I do have some other coins, in particular these Half Eagle Indian Heads, they have a huge premium right now, even if they aren't graded. These are both really nice specimens that I bought for a good price, and I've actually had offers for considerably higher than what I bought them for already. So I think it's probably a case of win some, lose some, but this new coin, the Liberty Head, it's something I've wanted for a while, so I didn't really care about all of that. This is just more a case of me enjoying the coin. So a few topics on this one. First off, I got a pre-33 double eagle, obviously. Now that was a long time coming and probably more fun for me than for you. But if you have some already or you're looking to get some, I'll throw a vote of support their way there. Very cool. I am partial to Liberty Heads over the Saints, by the way, but I know that I'm in the minority there. Second is the idea of collectible coins doing better in a price drop, especially if you aren't a savage who cracks them out of their slabs. Now, that's not a new idea, but I heard it from so many people lately that I guess I'm going to have to give it a little bit more credence. And then last is how directly the price of gold and silver are affected by the U.S. dollar performance and bond yields. Now, the news, it just kind of goes together at this point, and... If and when we see a longer term loss, dollar strength, and lower bond yields, that will most likely be the catalyst for higher gold and silver prices. And that's worth paying attention to. So let's call it good there. Let us know how you feel about pre-33 coins, how you feel about the recent price hike in gold and silver, and then I suppose what an idiot I am for destroying another coin slab. I think I can defend it on this one, but let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. It's a big help to the channel. Be sure to also subscribe with notifications turned on if you want to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.